I watched the new Godzilla X Kong Dawn of Justice Frozen Empire and oh boy, Adam Wingard, you have truly outdone yourself. In the same year that we've got one Godzilla movie winning the property's first Academy Award, we have another feeling more akin to the current style of Fast and Furious movies than the original vision of either of these properties. But is that necessarily a bad thing? Or does the all gas no brakes commitment to dumb, stupid, titan sized fun work for it? Because as excited as I was for this movie, I was a bit hesitant going into it. Kong is cool I guess, but I love the big G-Man. Godzilla, Ninja Turtles, and Digimon were the properties that consumed my young millennial brain growing up. And I've been hard pressed to find many Godzilla related showings that I didn't enjoy to some degree. Whether it be 2014, Shin Godzilla, the Godzilla anime, or even Godzilla v Kong. That was until the boring waste of hard drive space that was Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Not surprised this ended up on Apple TV because nobody else was going to pay for this news fest. Apple is just happy to have anything that garners a look their way. Like a kid being picked last for dodgeball, they're just happy to be included. And to be honest, as much as I objectively believe Monarch would have been mid at best either way, I do think the miserable time I had with it was amplified by having just witnessed the holy grail of Godzilla films, minus one. This film set such a high bar of expectations for this property, particularly when it came to humans in the story, that going from characters so compelling and well written that I found myself not caring about where Godzilla was, to a bunch of mannequins mindlessly following a mediocre plot was excruciating. And there was a part of me that worried if that mesmerization from Minus One would carry into this film and lessen my enjoyment of it. But I'll be honest, it didn't affect it one damn bit. Mostly because this lovably dumb movie is so removed from any of the tone or themes of Minus One that they aren't even comparable. It would be like hating Blue's Clues because it's not Shawshank Redemption. Even though I would be curious to see how Steve handled that one. These movies want two completely different things and put forth drastically different experiences and that's fine by me. I loved seeing the embodiment of the horrors of war and agent of destruction Godzilla, but I also like seeing the pissed off defender of the world Godzilla. Although to clarify, this Godzilla kills way more people than Minus One. Little Goji might be all menacing and intentionally hunting people, but Big G-Man over here just wrecks everything in his path. Just swimming to meet Kong, this man kills a few hundred people taking out bridges along his path. But, flawed protector as he may be, how can you not love this adorable super puppy curling up inside the Roman Colosseum for a nap? So cute. Would definitely risk radiation poisoning for a nose rub. Anyway, Godzilla x Kong is by all accounts dumb as hell, but it's dumb fun. This movie is littered with really fun monster fights. If you just love watching these titans throw down, this is the movie for you. These humans are certainly not compelling, but they are the most tolerable they've been in this series. Not feeling like a pointless addition to the movie, but genuinely serving the plot. Even getting a couple good chuckles out of me, mostly on account of Dan Stevens having the time of his life as Trapper, who was an enjoyable addition to it. But especially his dynamic with Brian Tyree Henry, who is always enjoyable. Like I said, the kaiju fights are fun and emphasized. Even one who gets straight victimized like Tiamat. She's just out there chilling in the Arctic, but Godzilla is gathering radiation for his upcoming battle, and just so happens a huge source of that is in Tiamat's home, so sorry, guess you gotta catch these hands. Which really is G-Man's motto this whole movie. There's a part later where Kong is trying to get Godzilla to help him face Star King and his army, so he returns to the surface. And when Godzilla pulls up, he has his hands raised, trying to talk, and Godzilla just says, nah, fuck all that, I'm here to box, and just starts jumping his ass. Kong got his couple licks in though, I'm not gonna lie. That new power arm he got had him going full Hulkbuster, just beating down on Godzilla for a minute or two. One of the funniest moments in this movie to me is where Kong starts dragging Godzilla's angry ass towards the portal and turns just in time to see him all powered up about to blast and the 
oh shit moment on his face had me crying. Both Titans stay pretty true to who they've been in so far in this series. Godzilla just wants to fight and Kong is just trying to be left alone and keeps getting pulled into this nonsense. I like his bond with Gia in both of these movies. It works a lot better than the forced, not really existent one with Godzilla and Millie Bobby Brown. As much as I love Godzilla, Kong is easier to make more human and can emote easier, so it makes sense that he feels kind of more like the main character in these movies. We are exploring a lot of the plot through him and the humans, where Godzilla just shows up to rumble. Speaking of kaijus, we got a few others with real focus on them aside from the ones just there to fight. One I know we were all curious about from the trailers is Little Baby Kong, and I can't lie, I love the little guy. Now, something they didn't emphasize in the trailer that I loved was Baby Kong starts off as a little shit. When they meet, Kong reaches out his hand, trying to tell Little Man everything's gonna be okay, only to have him start biting the absolute hell out of his hand. And the immediate flip Kong does to beating his ass was hilarious. Never did I expect him to use Baby Kong as a weapon and start bashing the other apes with him. But as the story goes on, the two start to bond, and Diddy Kong stops trying to get him killed, and they form a cute duo. Kong radiates some hardcore stepdad energy in this one, as he has to deal with Kid Gong's shenanigans such as leading him into a sea serpent ambush, just to end up reluctantly sharing his food, aka the sea serpent, with the whimpering child. I liked how their dynamic evolved throughout the story as Baby Kong turned against his abusive daddy Scar King and began to side with Kong. Speaking of Scar King, that man is an asshole. He lives up to being a straight menace as we see how he mercilessly abuses and controls the beings under him. From heads of Kongs on pikes to killing an older ape just for shielding baby Kong from him. And he always is laughing like a true bad guy, mocking Kong all throughout their fights. And his treatment of another character we're waiting on wasn't any better, as we find out that Shimu is basically enslaved and being controlled by Scar King who has some kind of crystal that lets him herd and control the titan. Definitely was expecting a more menacing version of the Ice Kaiju, especially from the leaked designs, but they are more just a victim of the main bad guy, and I was happy when they got their payback in the end, and I guess now happily live as Kong's good doggo, so there's that. As much as I hate how they were treated, it did make for some sick 2v2 fights as Kong faced off against Star King and Shimu and Godzilla threw down. The other kaiju we heard rumors about was Mothra, and although like a lot of things in this movie, her return doesn't really make sense, I still love seeing her, as she is my favorite kaiju outside of Godzilla. I especially loved when Godzilla and Kong are fighting and she shows up like the man's girlfriend and tells him to chill out. Godzilla attitude switches up the moment she flies out, and you can see the reluctant, fine, I'll be nice in his eyes. Absolutely love this. In general, when this movie is faced with a choice between logic and doing something cool, it chooses to be awesome, and I'm down with it. It radiates what we loved about something like Fast and Furious when it was at the peak of its dumb fun era. Things like them having the power arm already done and in Hollow Earth and loaded up with medicine to fix Kong's frostbite by pure coincidence is outrageous. But it leads to him having a cool weapon, so who cares? This movie abandoned all the unnecessary explanations, realizing it wouldn't make sense even if they tried, so why not just have fun? And I'm fine with it. I wouldn't say quality-wise this movie is as good as the other films in this series so far, even Godzilla v Kong. But what I will say is it's so entertaining that I could care less. This movie is pure popcorn blockbuster, kick back and watch your favorite kaijus do cool shit fun, and I think it's worth every penny. Let me know what you guys thought of the movie, what you enjoyed or hated, and your favorite moments in the comments down below. Until next time, I'm That Hero Fury, and I hope you have a fantastic day.